Okay, so here I am. I'm prepping the uh, piece to be cast. Now this Lincoln piece and this uh, portrait that I've done need to be cast in uh, silicone rubber. And you can see I'm starting off. What I'm putting on there is actually modeling clay. It's a, a plastilina kind of clay. This is a non-sulfur based plasticine because the sulfur would inhibit the cure of the silicone rubber. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a clay barrier around any of the cracks where it seals to the wood backing that uh, would keep the rubber from getting it. Now on this piece I'm cleaning the glass uh, because the silicone rubber will take any fingerprints or smudges. So I'm carefully cleaning around is the last thing I do there. Now we start pouring the rubber. Don't forget to spray a release agent on the glass. It'll make all the difference when you're trying to remove it. Okay, now here we're going to continue pouring the rubber. Now I'm pouring it in a thin stream and that helps reduce the bubbles. The purple color is the uh, just the catalyst color. It indicates what uh, speed the catalyst is going to make the rubber go off at. And this is a slow one. It's 60 to 90 minutes of uh, working time. And that's going to allow me to get this uh, detail layer on very nicely. So as I work around, you can see I'm, I'm dripping it on. You shake and bang the board a little bit. And there's me with a nice, fine, soft, very soft tip brush. And what I'm doing is I'm working it into the details and uh, making sure that I don't have any bubbles or any um, blank spots of the rubber. So I'm going to work it in, especially around the face. You saw me starting to work with that. And then I'm getting in all these little undercuts that might have had a little bit of uh, bubbles going on. So as I work along the piece, I just move bit by bit. And this is the reason why I use this uh, catalyst that has the slower cure time because it gives me plenty of time to get in there and get those details in before the rubber starts to firm up. Now this is this is a little bit of a, a tedious process here um, but it's very important to make sure and I'm pushing that rubber around. I'm, I'm really not trying to touch the clay underneath and here you see me with the spatula. This is on the smooth parts but I'm just I'm just smoothing the rubber around and really uh, forcing it into the cracks on that on that uh, straight piece. So this is going to give me a good coverage for the first layer of rubber and we're going to go from there just making sure that we're constantly checking for air bubbles and any discrepancies. The rubber uses different catalysts to speed up its set time. This one's the slowest, the purple at uh, 60 to 90 minutes. The yellow is uh, 30 to 35 minutes and then the red is the fastest set time of 15 to 30 minutes. They can all be mixed to get the time you need. Okay, this next layer of rubber is a different color so we can gauge the thicknesses and know how many layers we're going with. Um, I also added a thickener in it so that it'll hold up and not just drip off of the vertical surfaces. In addition to that, I'm making sure to build up all of the areas that are thin from the first layer. Now, the purple layer, um, as it settled, it settled onto those flat planes in a fairly thick layer, especially inside the frame around the Lincoln. Um, but these pieces that I'm covering right now are the vertical ones and they tended to be pretty thin over the surface, especially on the high points. And so you'll see me adding a lot on there. I started with that little brush on the face just to make sure I was getting all the little details in the nooks and crannies. Right now I'm making sure to, to uh, get those edges because on corners, especially of uh, flat sharp corners, the uh, the rubber um, will just drizzle off and that's why we use a thickener for the second layer and it gives me a good thick place to start um, for our third layer. This third layer is using the 15 to 30 minute catalyst. It turns a nice bright pink. It was the 
the red catalyst in the bottle and it works really well for uh, getting on a nice layer of rubber real quick. Uh, you don't have to worry about details with this one. In fact, you probably shouldn't be doing this one for detail la layers unless you're doing a very small piece. This one's good um, to go fast because you can get it to drip down those sides, but then it won't pool out like the purple would, or even the yellow if it's not thickened. So this is going to give us a good coverage for a third layer. On this piece I decided to do one extra layer just to make sure I had the right thickness, especially over Mr. Lincoln. I, I wanted to make sure that those high points were covered and it wasn't going to be too thin. I hate a mold ripping on you and, and it's, it's worth it to spend the extra time and a little bit of money to make sure that I've got that. Now what I'm cutting up right now are going to be registration marks to anchor the, the rubber into its mother mold of plaster and um, that's going to help it to align properly, especially on those flat planes. It's nice to have something that's sticking down in so that the, the flat planes can lock into that mother mold. Doing this and, and painting over it is going to make sure that we're not going to have any undercuts that are going to catch, and that's, that's a big issue sometimes with these, uh, these overhangs and such. You don't want undercuts. Okay, now that I've got the uh, rubber done, I'm trimming it up to get the mother mold ready. So the mother mold is going to be in a hydrocal plaster which casts uh, nice and strong. I'm going to do separate molds for these two pieces obviously because I don't need uh, to have them both cast at the same time each time. Now I'm butting these right up to that wood because I really only need the face plate of that, uh, that Lincoln piece. I'm not casting the sides of the wood. There goes the release agent the first layer of plaster to get right around those corners. That I do that because it helps seal up the corners quick. I mix a hot mix that's going to cure real quick and that'll keep any uh, gaps. Otherwise you'd have to clay the edge and uh, make sure that you don't have a leak. So now I'm mixing up more hydrocal. I'm going to be putting that on and then I use a fiberglass mesh reinforcement. Um, it's, it's the same stuff that they use for the EIFS uh, stucco. It's, it's a great fiberglass mesh, square mesh. And then what I'm going to do here, I'm not going to cast a solid uh, mother mold. So I'm not going to cast it up to that ridge, which I could be doing, but it's kind of a waste of uh, the extra plaster. So what I do is I uh, anchor those screws in with some wires, and then when I add the other plaster, it pours in and sets. And then I can actually adjust those screws to give me a level. And so it's, uh, it's basically like uh, table legs that are going to allow it to be level for when I'm, when I'm casting it. Which is really good if you don't have a perfectly level casting table all the time or a perfectly level mold making table, which uh, this is the case. And this, this rubber or this uh, plaster is starting to get hard on me. So I just decided to mix up some more. So we're putting it on. This is, uh, this is a one-off casting. I know I don't need a real, real hard thing. I just need to make sure that I've got the rubber set in. So you can see how quickly that rubber was ready to, or the, the plaster is ready to come off. And I trim up the edges. The hardest thing is to get it off, of, off the first time. Now that was me loosening those screws so that they're not poking in um, by any chance when I'm trying to remove the piece. So we're going to pop these off the board. See, that one came off real nice. The Lincoln piece, that's going to be more of a challenge, especially with all those undercuts. See, there you go. It's, that one's ready to be cleaned up a little bit, and we can make our first casting with that one. Now, this one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, anytime you have those, uh, this going on, what, what's going to happen is you're going to have a problem with a vacuum. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking up the vacuum. There we go. Broke out the vacuum. And then uh, I need to get the, the rubber off. I'm checking all of the points. Very carefully pulling it up at the edges. Now we're going to have a little bit of deformity on the clay, especially in that boot. That looks like I'm going to tear the foot right off, I think. But it looks like it's coming out nicely. Didn't get tucked under too bad. And... There we go. 
on a high relief or a 3D sculpture like this, we're going to have pieces come off into the mold. Now, if you haven't already put in separators, as if you were doing a two-part mold or a multi-part mold, you're going to need to take a little razor blade and separate the, the mold a little bit to break those out of there. But that's not a big deal. It's a good mold, and this is going to make great castings. Thank you.